Hello, everyone. Good evening. How are we all doing? It's good to be here and it's good to see that our mentors are already here. So I can see that um, Uboho is here, Mr. George is here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you um, for taking your time to be here. Thank you for um, finding it very important to invest in the next generation. We are very grateful. So my name is Juliana Imam, and I'll be your anchor for today. Um, today we'll be talking about resolving disputes in the energy industry, and we have professionals who will be here to um, talk more about it. Um, we would also be taking presentations from our mentees, and then the practitioners in our midst will be um, talking about it from a practical perspective. So with that, I'll just go ahead to read what um, we're about so that those joining us for the first time can know more about us. Um, the Gypsy Mentorship and Internship Program for the Energy Industry is a quarterly program for students, young professionals, and enthusiasts across Africa. Mentees are afforded the opportunity to access valuable advice, training, network, mentorship, internship, discussion forums, industry updates, and resource materials from experienced mentors. This, mentor, this program seeks to encourage continuous training, development, and evolution in Africa and around the world. You can watch our videos by searching for Gypsy on YouTube and Facebook. Our hashtag is GypsyMIP. And our objectives are to provide easy access to quality professional guidance, training, resource materials for students, young professionals and enthusiasts in Africa to facilitate dialogue and network among experienced and less experienced practitioners and stakeholders to transform mentees into mentors and leaders for the next generation of mentees to facilitate further mentorship, internship, scholarship, job placement for mentees. And um, with that, I would also like to talk about um, the private mentorship that is um, available for um, mentees that might want to spend 30 minutes with mentors. So for some mentors, they have accepted to give 30 minutes of their time to, men to mentor um, on a more personal note. So if you'd like to take advantage of that, please use the link bit.ly slash gypsypm to register for that and we'll get in touch with the mentor and um, see if we can schedule a time that's convenient. We have um, four mentors today that will be joining us talking about this topic. I'll just um, read out their names. Am I not going to the full profile because of time? Our first mentor is Mr. George U. Ukwoma. And um, he would, and he's a professional in the, en in the energy industry. He's a legal professional. Um, and he has over 10 years of experience and he'll be talking about this resolution, both litigation and ADR today. And we're excited to have you, Mr. George, um, our second um, mentor for today. Our second mentor for today is Mr. Milton Abibo. Mr. Milton Abibo, we are so grateful to have you again with us today. He was with us, um, I think last week and we had an amazing time with him. Thank you so much. He's also a legal practitioner and an entrepreneur and he's a managing solicitor and um, head of departments of the energy and environmental law of the law firm of Granville and Abibu and Co. We're excited to have you and we're looking forward to hearing your perspective on dispute resolution. Our, fourth, our third um, mentor for today is um, Boho Inyang, um, I'm excited to have him here because we went to the same school and it's good to see that everyone is striving in their various fields. So Oboho Inyang was called to the Nigerian by 2015 and um, he has worked with a couple of leading Nigerian law firms and we're excited to have him. He has several masters and he's a professional in the energy law and policy space. And we're excited to um, have him here with us. Welcome, Uboho Yang. And um, finally, um, we also have a professor with us. And um, I'm excited because I know that he'll be talking from years of experience, which is very valuable to um, what we see here. So Professor Kito Gogo Kingston, offers professional counsel on all facets of petroleum law, energy law, and natural law resources. It's a privilege to have the professor with us today. And with that, we'll be going into our presentations for today. So we'll be hearing first from Chisum Wadike. He'll be taking the first presentation and then we'll be hearing from the second group. So over to you, Chisum. Please unmute yourself 
um, and share your screen and you can begin your presentation. Thank you, Chisum. Okay, so I think Chisum might be having um, technical issues. So he just logged out now. So let's hear from the first group. Over to you. Please go ahead. Chisum, are you back with us? Please, if you're back, you can unmute yourself and um, share your screen and begin your presentation. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, um, Tuluwani will be sharing the screen today. Okay, you can go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, group two, we've been asked to discuss um, resolving energy disputes, um, ADR, that's alternative dispute resolution. So we know that um, um, disputes also happen at, um, in every sector and the energy sector is not, um, is not, um, is bound to have, they are bound to have some, um, issues in the energy sectors. So how do we um, resolve them? What mechanisms are in place? Um, we'll be talking about some energy sector disputes, the different ADR mediums, underlining principles and features of arbitration, um, commencement of the arbitral process, conduct of the arbitral proceedings, and we'll be talking about the award, and the rule of court, then we'll take the conclusion. Next slide, please. So, um, to please, next slide. So as I said earlier, um, um, the concept of energy and alternative disputes are becoming more and more related and, it, and related to each other due to the nature of most of the energy projects and success in the resolution of this energy dispute through ADR. The energy disputes arising arises out of investment project or energy purchase or supply agreements. So what this is just saying basically is that um, we are now seeing a, a global trend of energy and the use of ADR to resolve energy disputes. And this dispute can arise in, in, um, in terms of energy purchase or supply agreements. And we, we know that the energy sector is made up of so many activities, so which makes it more susceptible to being, um, having a lot of disputes, you know, so we know that um, we, the, there's the upstream sector um, and that's exploration, the downstream sector as well. So as well as uh, renewable energy sources. Next slide, please. Um, disputes can occur at every stage of development of these different energy activities. The issues are stake in dispute in the energy sector, or among other things, depend on the specific energy activities concerned. Concerned the type of parties involved, the whole states where the energy investment takes place, and the energy and contractual framework governing the disputes. The disputes in the energy sector may occur in various forms, ranging from transborder disputes, intercompany disputes, and disputes against individuals. So um, energy disputes can occur in different, uh, between different people. It can occur between a state and a state. Like let's assume Togo and Nigeria. Togo and Nigeria can have a dispute. It can occur between a company and a state. That's, let's assume um, Shell. Shell is having problem with the Nigerian government. And disputes can also occur between companies and companies. Maybe they were involved in one form of agreement or the other. And now uh, maybe one of them had 
um, gone against the agreement. So now there's a disagreement. Also, there can also be a dispute between an individual and the company, like for example, in terms of thoughts. So that's what this is all about. Next slide, please. Next slide. <clears throat> These activities involve the participation of different commercial and public. Okay, so now we are going into the dispute resolution mechanisms. So there are different form of ADR mechanisms, um, which are okay. Generally, they are um, they are um, a myriad of dispute resolution mechanisms, such as litigation. So we know that litigation is when you go to courts and you, the judge resolves the um, dispute. And we also have mediation. We also have arbitration. So either of these can be used. So we said that litigation is the most common method of dispute resolution. So that's what everybody knows. Um, when there's any disputes between people, they always go to courts. Um, so, but we've noticed that there is now a trend in the energy um, industry to resolve disputes through other alternative dispute um, resolution. Parties now draft clauses in their contract choosing the medium they want to make use of, thereby bringing in the dispute, alternative dispute resolution medium. So um, they, whenever they enter into any agreement, as you said earlier, so nowadays we've seen the trend of um, parties putting an ADR clause so that's what this is. Next slide. So we just want to give a brief energy sector dispute. So we we've had they've had we've had um, Republic of Ecuador versus United States of America, which was arbitrated according to the UNICEFRA rules. We've had the um, so that's what I was saying earlier of. Um, state versus state and that case was it was resolved under arbitration using the using trial rules but we also had the italian republic and republic of cuba which was resolved also by arbitration but now it was um, an ad hoc state to state arbitration so when we get to when we get from next slide we'll see what ad hoc arbitration means so um, the case was particularly interesting because um, it was resolved by it was resolved by arbitration. So next slide. So we've also had Venezuela holdings B F B V versus Venezuela. So that case was um, so resolved, and the claimant brought an arbitration under the Netherlands Venezuela um, bilateral. BIT 15 for expropriation and violation of fair and equitable treatment following the implementation of measures that affected the production and export into energy products. So we can see that there was a dispute as regards um, expropriation and violation of fair and equitable treatment, and it was resolved. So it just goes to show that um, arbitration has, is, is not a new um, method. It has been used, and also we've had the Nikom Synergetic Technology Holdings AB versus the Republic of Latvia. So this this was rendered in Stockholm, Sweden, on the 16th of December 2003. The case arose from an electricity sale agreement, which was brought before an arbitral tribunal. In this case, a Swedish investor in a Latvian generation plant team that Republic of Latvia had unlawfully discriminated against him in comparison to Latvian generators due to different tariffs imposed to him compared with those imposed to the native generators. Next slide, please. So what are the different ADR mediums? So, Negotiation is one of them. So what is negotiation? Negotiation is an alternative dispute resolution mechanism in which parties discuss possible outcomes. 
directly with each other. And most of the time, it takes place as a matter of course. So in negotiation, you have um, two parties seated just opposite each other, and they are, they are trying to resolve the matter, or they are trying to resolve the, um, the dispute. So this, this is um, a, a way of resolving disputes. For example, you can have, um, let's assume the Nigerian government and Togo government. So they come together, they sit down probably with their lawyers and they are trying to resolve the dispute. So that's negotiation and they're trying to get the best out of that agreement at the end of the day. So we have mediation as well. Mediation refers to a process where an impartial impartial third party facilitates negotiation between the disputing parties in terms of their needs and interests. So mediation is also another way parties resolve disputes. You know, it involves is a process that involves getting an impartial third party that facilitates the negotiation process on their behalf. So in negotiation, you just have two parties trying to um, come to an, an agreement, but in mediation, a third party tries to um, facilitate an agreement between both parties and that the impartial third party is known as the mediator and they come up with an agreement at the end of the day and that agreement will be binding on both parties. So arbitration, arbitration is a dispute resolution process whereby the parties instead of going to conventional courts constitute an arbitral tribunal to resolve their dispute. So um, in this case, let's assume um, let's say Shell has an issue with um, the Nigerian government, they can go to, uh, let's say the legal state multi-doc courthouse and they submit the dispute to arbitration. So that is what arbitration is all about. And they are able to, um, sorry, nominate the, um, the, the court will nominate a, um, a, an arbitrator that would look into the the issue of the parties. Sorry, the, the slide had gone, so I have to. Sorry, Toga, are you there? Please, you can continue the presentation while we wait for the person sharing the slide to continue. Okay, no problem. So moving on. So we know that um, it has it's been said that the most common ADR medium is arbitration. So generally the essence of arbitration is that a dispute had a, a reason of, or there's potential for a dispute to arise and the parties instead of going to conventional courts decide to refer, to the, refer the dispute to a private tribunal for settlement in a judicial manner. So arbitration is like an informal, informal way of resolving um, a dispute in a judicial manner. So um, the implication of the argument is that the, the decision of the arbitral tribunal will be binding on them. So at the end of the day, there is an award and the award is, is, is binding on the parties. In order to ensure that such a method of setting in this piece is effective assistance usually given by the ordinary machinery of law to ensure that such awards can be enforced. So in Nigeria, once you get an award, you, are, you can be able to uh, enforce it in courts, in state high court or a federal high court. Similarly, as a safeguard against impartiality and access of process, the court can in certain instances impeach an award. So what are the types of arbitration? You have the ad hoc and institutional arbitration, domestic and international. So the ad, ad hoc, as we know, is just a temporary, um, is temporary constitution of a tribunal. So it's not, it's after the um, arbitration has been um, concluded, the ad hoc will be dissolved. But well, institutional is, is, it means as the word says institution. So you go to an institution and you submit the the arbitration, the, the matter to an institution. Also, this domestic and international arbitration. Domestic, as we know, means local, like, you know, arbitration that involves um, maybe one of the parties is within Lagos or, you know, Nigeria. 
you know, or they decide to submit the to the to the Lagos um Montedor courthouse in the agreement. So that's domestic or international, maybe London, we're talking of when the parties or their businesses are not situated in Nigeria, maybe they're situated in London. So generally the issue that may arise in an in the energy sector can be classified into, as I've said earlier, it can be between states, between companies and states, between companies and finance, between individuals and companies. So what are the underlying principles of arbitration? We know that arbitration, there's party autonomy, which means parties are at liberty to, you know, it's not, it's not, um, it's not solely focused on the, 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 the court or something. There's usually free will for everybody to express themselves. So separability, which means that um, the, the arbitration clause is different from in the normal agreement setting in the sense that um, in, if, the, if, the, um, if the contract ends or the contract is, is revoked or one way or the other, the arbitration clause still stands. So we talk about arbitrability. Not every dispute can be submitted for arbitration. For, elect for example, election petition cases, criminal law cases cannot be submitted. So and involves minimal judicial intervention. That means um, they, they are not guided by normal rules of courts. So the features of arbitration. <clears throat> so um, features of agreement, agreement to arbitrate. So one of the basic features of arbitration is that there must be an agreement in place. If not, arbitration cannot stand. So as I said earlier, types, domestic, international, institutional, commercial, maritime, construction, choice of arbitrator. So um, the parties choose whoever they want to, the arbitrator, um, the decision of the arbitral tribunal is final binding on the parties and can be enforced. And there's absence of formalities. So as I said earlier, it's not, um, it's not governed by the rules of court. So they can tender evidence, you know, tender evidence as, as they want to. It's not, there's no need to lay any foundation or anything and what not so it's uncon and it's confidential too so um adr process is very very confidential which means it's it doesn't go it's a private it's a private thing unless you are invited you cannot you cannot know what's going on it's not like the court system that is open that anybody can just walk into the tribal now so it's anchored on certain fundamental principles so how do you commence an arbitral process? So you obviously it starts with the agreements. Does the agreement submit the um, the energy dispute to for um, ADR? So after that, if it does, then issuing of notice. So one of the parties issues a notice, especially the aggrieved party, we should notice to the other party that. Um, requesting him to come for arbitration that there is a dispute. So we know that they, ha they have to constitute the arbitral tribunal so parties can constitute it. But if the parties uh, uh, still want, they, they are, they've not come, you know, they don't have a final decision on who to arbitrate, the courts can help them or appointing authorities. So um, default uh, provisions are contained under section 21 of the ACA. The powers and duties of the arbitrator are contained under section 14, 15, and 19. So um, how do they conduct an arbitral process, proceedings rather? <clears throat> so um, first off, you start with a preliminary meeting. So in that meeting, you discuss with the, the arbitrator or whoever the arbitrator by social discusses with the, um, with the parties, gives them like a general background, tells them about the procedures, you know, just put, puts them through about everything they need to know throughout the whole procedure. So after that, they talk about the fee of the arbitrator, maybe date of the next meeting after the preliminary meeting, maybe they can call like some experts to, that's people in the energy industry that, that can explain certain technical terms 
that they have been tricked or all the parties might have overlooked one way or the other. So after that, the um, arbitrator makes certain orders. So we talked about the pre, -pre hearing review. Please start rounding up, Chisholm. Thank you. Hello, Chisholm, are you there? Okay. Um, I guess that you may be having um, technical issues. Can you hear me, Chisholm? Hello, Chisholm, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, please, you can round up. Okay, so um, at the end of the day, there's an arbitral award. Advantages of arbitration, as I said, party autonomy, access to a neutral forum, flexibility, confidentiality, the ability to choose arbitrators, disadvantages. We all know arbitration can be time consuming sometimes and it is very expensive. Sometimes some of these arbitrators don't have energy background, you know, so it's a problem. And some types of ADR are not binding. So in conclusion, we, all, we, we concluded that disputes are bound to arise. So how do we go? The disputes will determine whether um, we can go to, or sorry, the agreement will determine whether they can go to court or whether they go to arbitration first. So if the agreement says you must go to arbitration, you have to go for arbitration. So, and we believe that the, despite the disadvantage of ADR, the positives of ADR far outweighs the negatives. And we believe that arbitration is ideal for energy sector disputes because it's fast and it, it makes, at the end of the day, all parties are happy on like the court system that tries to pit two people together. And the fact that arbitral proceedings are private also you know, makes it very unique for um, energy for the energy sector. You know, some of the some of the argument or, or whatnot, you know, shouldn't be subject to public scrutiny. And at the end of the day, you can get your judgment enforced. So it's a win-win for everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Son, for the presentation and also for working together with your group, your group members to conduct the research and to make the presentation and also share your slides. Thank you. Um, so let's hear from group one. Who will be presenting for group one? Please go ahead. Can you hear me? I'll be presenting for group yes. one. Yes, okay. Yes. Yeah. So, I'll share Yeah. Yeah, so good afternoon, everybody. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. You can go ahead. Yes. So we are group one and we'll be talking on resolving energy disputes through litigation. Yeah. So like this food is actually very inevitable. Like as far as we are um, relating with individuals, we are relating with individuals, there will be this food. Even if we cannot be an island of knowledge on our own. And so we would relate with individuals and through that there will be this food. And as, as long as humans continue to relate and engage with other persons, this food would occur. And so the energy industry is one of the most complex and dynamic sectors in the world. The only and only its key players understand the fine line that separates fortune from failure. With matters ranging from contract issues to cross-border production, to environmental toxic thoughts, to offshore drilling, and many, many other things like that causes different disputes in our energy sector today. And so, um, in solving these disputes, we need leg the legal team to deliver results and solve disputes. 
Yeah. So I'll be briefly talking on energy law, like just very briefly. So energy law governs the use, application and conservation of energy sources. Then it was acknowledged in 1970. This basically deals with all natural gas, nuclear power, hydroelectric power, and many things like that. And so in the energy sector, there are different disputes that occur in the energy sector. We have state versus state, company versus state disputes, company versus company dispute and individual versus company disputes. For states versus states, this occurs on cross border, cross international boundary disputes, mostly in the maritime region. Then all and gas company are in the when they are allotted a these countries are asked to dispute costs and to provide the legal expertise with legal data to help in resolving the boundary disputes. Then also it occurs most times in case of transboundary dams used in powering electricity. And so these two countries bring conflict claims on ownership of, or who, of who, who is the real owner of these dams. And so there is disputes, conflict arise through this. And quickly moving on to company versus state disputes. This is between these disputes are also known as state investment disputes and investor state disputes. It happens when the government changes the terms and conditions of a real contract or sees or nationalize the investment that has already been decided previously. And so it will look like you are changing your contract. And for example, if Mr. A and Mr. B have already agreed at the beginning of the contract that, oh, we will pay you this particular amount. And at the end, you are telling Mr. A, and Mr. B is telling Mr. A that, oh, we cannot pay you. Oh, um, even though we signed the contract, we cannot pay you. This would cause disputes. And so investor, if investor, the oil and gas, meaning the oil and gas company wants to claim that they can base their claim on investment treaty or investment contracts, Example, production sharing contract and the rig service agreement or joint venture agreement. This can also cause disputes. Then we have company to company disputes. These disputes are known as international commercial disputes. In energy companies, these disputes occur in subcategories. The first category we have is joint venture participants in contracts like joint operating agreements, utilization agreements, farm out agreements, area of mutual agreements, study and bid agreements, sale and purchase agreements, what they buy and sell. Then we have confidentiality agreements. What we agree in our contract, oh, okay, if we agree that we would pay this amount, nobody, it would only be between us and nobody else. Then um, second category occurs between the operator and service contractor. For example, drilling and well service agreements, seismic contract, construction contract, equipment and facilities contract. We also have transportation and processing contracts. These are the company to company disputes we have. Then we also have individual versus company disputes. This is mostly like on that thought where um a company because of their own in the, um, because of their gain or what they want to do maybe they are creating infrastructures and things like that they get to injure individuals and most times in the energy industry it is mostly individuals and oil and gas companies for example i want to use this niger delta thing for example where Oil and gas, I be the gas, I be no no, um, petroleum. I think I really cannot remember the case, but petroleum spilled into their dams and rivers and it destroyed fishes. So we can classify that one under individual to company these goods. Then um, first, when the individual experiences the personal injury and claim tort action against the company, they sue the company. Then the second series of claim occur when the promoters of oil and gas deals assets that they are interested in hosting government contracts 
and going with joint operational operating agreements, and sometimes in regard of a claim of tortious interference by a third party, compensation is um, employed. This compensation is like when you pay this individual for the injury that you have caused to them. Then, however, this dispute is mostly witnessed in environmental related cases. Then um, we have litigation of energy disputes. There are numerous ways employed in resolving energy disputes, one of which is litigation. And like the other group already explained, we also have, we cannot just um, base it on litigation. We have to still talk about arbitration, mediation, counselation, reconciliation, and negotiation. And also litigation in courts is understandably the most familiar dispute resolution tool to lawyers. It is mostly, it is most frequently used in the domestic energy business with parties from the ju same jurisdiction. For example, maybe people only, people parties in US and US, parties in Canada and Canada, things like that. Then it is not the preferred forum for international disputes because most international disputes are mostly resolved through arbitration. For a number of reasons, including pro problems in enforcing court judgments in foreign jurisdiction, courts and length of trials and aversion of local courts by foreign investors. And then as a result, it is rarely chosen as a dispute resolution because normally, apart from even resolving energy disputes, even normal disputes, we know how many, how many years litigation takes in court. We have to go to through different steps and it really takes time. Instead of resolving disputes easily, we cannot resolve it easily. We would spend money, time, and a lot of things like that. So as a result, it is rarely chosen as a dispute resolution mechanism in international oil and gas agreements. It is sometimes chosen in international oil and gas agreements when all the parties come from the same jurisdiction, that's an exception to it. When all the parties come from the same jurisdiction, that is when it can be chosen. And they ask, and so they are comfortable with the courts of their own country. Then, as I say, litigation is an unpopular form of resolving disputes because even when we were making researches, it was difficult to get cases on litigation. It's mostly arbitration we were seeing. And so I feel like, I stand to be corrected, but I feel like litigation is an unpopular form of resolving disputes in the energy sector. Then the energy sector is a very technical and nuanced sector, which has certain inclination and implications that could be most times only interpreted by industry experts and expert determination. Okay. So in most jurisdictions around the world, litigation is not a popular technique of resolving disputes, like I said earlier. Then energy has technicalities, which has conventional, which a conventional judge cannot appreciate in adjudicating over. Then therefore, majority of the players in the industry, energy industry predominantly adopt arbitration as a tool for dispute resolution in order to get effective and favorable judgments from industry experts. Because in arbitration and other, other um, ways of dispute, you can involve, you can even mediation, you, you have to bring experts. But, um, but litigation, you rarely bring experts. And then, and through that, more, majority of the players in the industry, in the energy industry would not get favorable judgments. Then although litigation is used in certain issues between government and companies on issues of antitrust regu regulation, consumer protection and license reg registration, but it's most, mostly not used in energy disputes. Then individuals also adopt litigation in seeking remedy against energy companies who might have injured them in one way or the other. This is a common, this is common in environmental degradation caused by energy companies. It occurs regularly in the South-South region of Nigeria, which has a high presence of energy company. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Ajun, for that beautiful presentation. I think it was well researched and beautifully presented. Thank you, Ajun. Um, so we'll be hearing from our mentors. So our mentors are people who already have experience in the energy field, both in litigation and arbitration and um, alternative dispute resolution. We'll be hearing from them from their practical experience. So first of all, we'll be hearing from Mr. Milton. Over to you, sir. I would like to know your thoughts on the presentations and um, um, a little of your practical experience in the subject matter. Thank you, Mr. Milton. No, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, hi everyone. Hi, Juliana. Hi, thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you for having me, it's an honor. Um, first of all, I would like to I would like to commend the presenters. I I think they did a thorough job and um I mean considering considering their their background, I, I think they, they they did an exhaustive job on the subject matter. Um but I'd like to make a few comments um as regards the, the presentation generally. Um you know the energy energy area of law is is a technical area of law and um Energy, energy law or energy disputes have generally adopted arbitration as as a means of settlement of of disputes for for several reasons. Um, we all know that litigation is very rigorous. Litigation is very time consuming. Litigation can be very expensive. Litigation can also be very traumatizing. It affects the relationship of the parties. It, um, shall I say, encourages malice. And um, litigation also has a way of exposing the trade secrets of, of, of energy companies. So because of the shortcomings of litigation, the, this, the, energy, this, the energy industry has generally adopted arbitration as a way of resolving their disputes. Arbitration has four major advantages against the litigation. First of all, arbitration is, is, is quite more flexible than litigation in the sense that uh, parties are allowed to you know, nominate their preferred arbitrators Parties are allowed to decide on the location, and you know, parties are given the opportunity to have a say in the arbitral process, unlike in litigation, where the arbitral the, 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 the litigation process is you know decided upon by the courts. Um, number two is that uh, arbitration also has some level of finality and certainty. Um, that's an advantage it has over and above other forms of dispute resolution mechanisms other than litigation. It can be easily enforced. Um, there's something called the, the New York Convention. The New York Convention is a convention that regulates the, the enforcement of foreign arbitral awards. It has been adopted by, by so many countries, a majority of the countries, and the moment a country adopts the New York Convention, it can enforce an arbitral award that was given even outside its jurisdiction. So that 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 makes that makes arbitration quite popular. That's an advantage that uh, several other dispute resolution mechanisms, you know, do not do not have. Um, Arbitration also makes use of experts. You know, the energy industry is is an industry that that is made up of experts. So it's it's it's, it's preferable for experts to to join in the process of resolving this piece in the industry. Arbitration of, offers that significant advantage uh, over other dispute resolution mechanisms. 
So yes, um, for now that's my that's my contribution to your presentation. Thank you. Time goes on to make further contributions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Milton. I think that was a very valuable contribution to the discussion from your experience. Thank you very much. Um, let's hear from Mr. Ubohu on his comments on the presentation and um, his practice, what he thinks about the subject matter. You're muted, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. And it's, uh, uh, the, both, both presentations were uh, awesome, uh, all encompassing. I think both teams did a great job. Um, yeah, my comments. I would say, yes, the energy industry, we all understand how, um, I would say, how precarious, and we all understand the high value of investments uh, involved in the energy industry. So you consider a situation where one invests millions of dollars, if not billions, in one investment, um, which is why arbitration seems to be um, the in thing, um, no one wants to commit his or her fate into the hands of a domestic um, court or national court that could, you know, deliver judgment in favor of a state. Um, but of course, international arbitration seems to be that room or that in thing that enable um, investors to at least have some certainty to get back their returns in the event of any misbehavior by the host uh, nation. Um, in terms of um, the development of international arbitration, I mean, we have seen that the society is evolving and we are also seeing the issue of jurisdiction, which is also why um, litigation is a bit discouraging because um, considering the fact that litigation you go before domestic courts, you really do not have an international court per se um, to uh, entertain a matter. Um, looking at how the world is becoming, let's say a one world, a virtual world, where jurisdiction uh, should not limit anyone in seeking justice. Then you see that international arbitration um, also becomes the new bride in town. Um, in terms of awards, we realize that when it comes to uh, monetary awards, um, monetary awards, for instance, the arbitration seem to offer more. Um, you see cases where um, a panel will deliver awards running into millions of dollars. Um, I mean, but you hardly, I mean, even if you have that in the case of litigation, the enforcement, the chances of um, getting that money, getting it enforced in litigation will be slimmer uh, uh, as compared to international arbitration, especially when backed up by, let's say, it's an exit arbitration. Um, in terms of um, looking at other options, ADR alternate uh, options or um, for um, negotiation, um, mediation, I think arbitration still uh, seem to be more um, um, arbitration seem to be more um, encouraged or preferred concerning considering the fact that uh, negotiation and mediation and the like in terms of enforcement, enforcement is also weak, uh, unlike arbitration, um, especially like I said, if it's an investment arbitration conducted uh, by the ICSI. I mean, in the course of time, we'll talk more about this, but generally the presentations were awesome. I agree, and I also see that the, the both teams uh, did um, a good job by uh, researching and also coming to a conclusion that at the end of the day, uh, arbitration is preferable to in any energy dispute as compared to other uh, means of dispute resolution. So good job. Uh, I believe I will have more time to talk later on. I hope this is not the only time I'm talking. No, no, no. no. <laughs> You'll answer some questions. Thank you very much, Bohu, for Great. that um, 
comments. Um, thank you so much. Uh, so let's move over to Mr. George to hear his comments on the presentation and also um, a little on his practice on the topic. Over to you, Mr. George. Yep. Good afternoon, everyone. So um, um, let me first of all thank uh, Juliana for the invite. Um, it's um, a, a privilege to be here to address um, young minds. And I'm gonna start by commending the uh, presentations that uh, we just uh, listened to. Um, one thing I would um, say is the depth of research. Um, of course, there are quite a lot of material. There's quite a lot of literature on the subject matter. You know, energy drives the world without a doubt. You know, energy um, is quite vast and it involves a lot of uh, uh, parties all across the globe, where you're talking about oil and gas, talking about power, talking about renewable energy, you're talking about uh, 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 contracts relating to uh, uh, supply and distribution of uh, oil, oil from one country to the other, between the West, the East, and all that. So you can begin to see how complex this, this, uh, the, the, the relationship is. And as complex as it is, there certainly has to be um, a way of resolving disputes that typically will arise as a result of uh, breaches of uh, contracts within that sector. I see references made by, I think the first presentation made by uh, Chiso where he made references to some uh, precedents, some cases um, in arbitra arbitration cases um, that cut across jurisdictions uh, um, in Europe and uh, in the US. That goes to show how um, uh, um, the fact that these, these disputes are not really a national issues. They, are, they, they cut, they, goes way, they go way beyond the, the, the jurisdiction of Nigeria to include all other countries. So I must first of all commend uh, the, present, the presenters for a, a very well, job well done. And I must um, encourage them that uh, you know, a lot more research needs to be done in, into this uh, field because there's a, there's, I don't think we have as much energy uh, law practitioners in Nigeria as uh, that are very vast in terms of uh, you know, understanding you know, what, uh, how the industry plays in the, in the international uh, um, scene. Um, my own take on uh, dispute resolution, basically, I, I, without having to repeat what uh, Milton and uh, Uboho Iyang have just said, uh, we all agree that uh, dispute resolution is one very vital uh, aspect in terms of resolving uh, differences between parties to a contract. And energy disputes are majorly contractual based, you know, where you're talking about joint venture agreements, uh, JVs, and then joint operating agreement, JLA, and all of that. If, if you want to bring it down home, you're talking about the power, uh, uh, power purchase agreements that typically you will see in the power sector. Uh, um, of course, that came on board after the unbundling of uh, the power industry creation of the generate, uh, the nine distribution companies, the uh, transmission company of Nigeria, and then the uh, uh, distribution companies. You know, so you have this interchange of uh, relationships, you know, within that sector. So, and then, yeah, so my own take is the forum for which these disputes can be resolved is, is, is a very critical aspect. Um, when you look at our, uh, court system in Nigeria, you, you hardly find um, a precedence that deals with some of these very technical issues as it relates to energy law. Um, where you see that happen is uh, parties decide to res um, um, settle for arbitration because that is perhaps the best form to settle disputes. One other very unpopular but you know, um, a better form of resolving energy disputes would be mediation. Of course, I'm aware that uh, two years ago or three years ago, if I'm not mistaken, there's this um, um, the, the, um, Singapore Convention. There's uh, what we now call a mediated settlement agreement, which parties within the energy 
industry can also uh, take advantage of. I don't think any of the presenters made reference to that. That's another area uh, to look into because uh, uh, energy, like I said, energy related issues are majorly contractual based. Um, I wouldn't say much now until the questions come in. So I will address the questions uh, as they come. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Jobs, for the addition and also for that point that you made concerning the mediation and the new area. Thank you very much. So we'll hear from our professor. Finally, would love to hear your comments and um, your thoughts on the practice. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Um, Hello, sir. I'm very pleased to be here. I've uh, listened. I've listened to the young minds, and uh, they are definitely. I can say there is hope for Nigeria. As it stands now, um, in the Niger Delta, we are only two professors of petroleum law and energy and natural. Myself and Professor Morege, that are well entrenched in this area. But I'm just about four years in Nigeria. I've been in UK for 26 years. Um, it's about time to be home to help to develop and uh, pay back to the society that that got that uh, created me. Um, I'm so happy to hear the two groups. Their presentation were well well researched because when you sent me the um, if you invite, I asked you, I said, what level are these mentees? Well, the reason for that question is so that we have to tailor our okay i think there's a break in transmission um with his internet connection so we'll just um um while we wait for him I'll our just... advice and our comments and answers at what they have done much I uh, am very pleased that we are getting we are getting on so much. I served the organizer and my fellow mentors. I say thank you to the young minds that we are mentoring. Uh, I I have a very busy uh, schedule, but um, haven't invited me. I had to pull out because I have to put some things aside. To I am a consultant to seven oil companies in Nigeria. Out of the seven, only two I am in the junior. Yes. So, um, uh, so, but let me add to it. We must the entire EDR process with arbitration. If you want to discuss arbitration, focus on that aspect. Don't go to negotiation, mediation, and all that. You're bringing entire subject together. Try to concentrate. If you talk about arbitration, talk about arbitration. Talk about the, the scope of arbitration, the, uh, the benefit of arbitration, the need and reason why the rationale of arbitration. And then look at the challenges. What are the challenges? What are the, are, is it efficiently, uh, is it efficient? Has, is it getting us anywhere? Is it helping the industry? See, the death of the, of the energy industry is not possible. It's going to outlive us. So we have to be part of the developing process. When I, 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 I studied oil and gas at master's level in the UK, the issue of sustainable energy was still on the not in the front burner. People were not serious about sustainable energy, but it was as we finished masters, I went to the PhD. Then it became an issue that people have to look into. So the world is moving from uh, fusion uh, from uh, hydrocarbon to other sources. But then, can we get rid of hydrocarbon now? You still need even for the solar solar batteries that power solar energy, you will need component of oil and gas to develop the batteries. You see, now let me now focus on the presentation so far. The, the second presenter 
got some points modeled up. What are the points that we modeled up? Um, first, let me let me thank her for separating different levels of causes of action. You see, we have company V company, very good. Presenter number two, thank you. We have individuals versus company, such as the Bemre V Shell, we were V Shell. Then we also have um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the company, the company nationally and cross-border. I was very impressed when the young lady was mentioning the, the cross-border board. She ought to have cited examples such as the, such as the, uh, the treaty between Nigeria and Swatome and the principal and so on. We needed examples of each of those stuff. Okay, now it is important that we don't mix the joint operating agreement and joint venture. They are completely different aspects. So uh, in conclusion, the two presentations were wonderful. The first one was fabulously, uh, uh, it excited me by going to the Latin America, the, the sum of the litigations and so on. The second one was more um, uh, grounded in classifications of uh, variables. So on the whole, you cannot separate, if I was to be as a professor, was, was to, be, to be given the two presentations to score, I will score them equal. I will give them B. For, for LLB level, and I gradually, I will give them B. They've done wonderful work. But then the presentation number one had an age because of authority cited. You want to be lawyers, you cannot do without authority. And for my fellow mentors, and I don't know you people in, in, in uh, please, I encourage you to do your PhD in the area. You are good. You are damn good. Do your PhD in the area. I will, be, I, will be, I will be happy to supervise you. And I will not delay you. I'm British, I'm British national. I said I did, I'm consultant to saving oil companies. If I use Nigerian citizenship, I won't get that many because I'm British. That is why I'm getting that many. But I'm very happy to support both the, the mentees and also the, my colleagues for them to develop. We need to grow this country. The two, there, is, there is too much, uh, 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 personal interest in Nigeria. We have to rise above that and encourage everybody. There is space for everyone in this world. So that's it. Um, another thing I need to say before on, on the presentation is that one of my mentors, the first guy that spoke, said something. You see, what is the reason we need to know why is arbitration necessary in the energy industry? Why? The, re, the one of the core phrase that is regularly being used at higher level is that the what we call reputational damage. Reputational da damage, the energy sector doesn't like to wash their linen in the public. If you go to an open court with your energy dispute, of course, people will walk in and out and listen to it. And in the process of defending or litigating, a lot of things that are hidden will come out. The oil industry is a very secretive industry. I am a member of the industry. So I know it's a, there are a lot of things that you shouldn't hear about as a member of the public. Of course, it's trade secrets shouldn't be. So, the fellow mentors mentioned this, and I want to sound this again, that the energy industry doesn't allow their business to be in the, in the, in the public domain. And that is the more reason why I apply for the oil industry. In every agreement, I've, since I've been in Nigeria since 2016, I've personally vetted at least 100 agreements for the oil companies. And this, you as lawyer, you don't draft, not like in every other industry like banking. There is no drafting 
of agreement for the oil company, oil company as a lawyer. The agreements are already there. They call the model forms. It is for you to adjust every each every clause to suit the need of the, your company, your client. So it is not, you must submit arbitration. Otherwise, nobody will sign a contract with you. For example, joint venture contract or joint development agreement or unitization agreement. You, you all marginal field assignment of, of, of rights of marginal field of farm out. So the, it is arbitration, my, my young people listen carefully this arbitration we are talking about is a major part of the agreement of the energy industry which are already written down in the model forms what are model forms model forms are templates which energy corporations and their non-profit organizations have already already written now for example if you want a model joint venture now if you want to download it, you pay $300. When you download it, you now sit down with the board of your company or your oil company or any energy company. They will tell you what, the, what they intend to achieve in the agreement they want to sign with, this, with the next party. It is there and then they will tell you what, how to readjust the, the format to suit them. When they adjust it, they give it to the, the other party. The other party will see whether they're happy with it. They would you keep going to and fro to and fro until the both parties agree. So it is not a choice, it's compulsory. Why? Because energy industry don't want you to go to court. Now, the other way that energy that energy com com companies have no choice than to go to court is when one grant is when the, the there is a poor drafting. For what for drafting of the of the arbitration clause itself, where it is poorly drafted, and, and an unexpected event occur, that that part of that clause did not cover. Even at that, they will negotiate it, unless one party is so aggrieved that he wants to go to court. Now, so when is yes. The second presenter said something that a company, the company is arbitration. Well done. This is good. That a private individual versus company, can, the private individual will go to court. But I just finished a case in Aquaibo. I will mention the company. A community hired me to sue the, the oil company, an Indian oil company. What happened? Once they were served with the papers, they came up and offered 60 million. And the company, they started drinking kai kai. They were so excited. But I told them, hold on, we can get more. But they refused, they took their money. So oil company, why did the oil company do that? Not that they are too guilty, no. They don't want to mess their business. One, if they fight with the company in court, with the community in court, then the area will be hostile for them. Even though the course of action did not, they could have gone to court and drag it as long as possible, but they wanted it settled. So, but now, if it is company v company, it is straight arbitration. The, the, but there, is, there are problems, and those problems we will discuss in the next segment. So thank you for the presentation, and my colleagues who have spoken so well, I thank you so much. You've done well, and I will, I stand to, to check, Google me up. You can contact me. I will support you, and I want you to grow. What well, we are getting soon, we retire, and you will be the pilots. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. Listening to you, I just want to start my own. <laughs> it's so nice to <laughs> to be encouraged. Uh, uh, Juliana, already Juliana, Juliana. Just one minute, please. I have not met. I have. I did a, a search on you when you sent invitation. Actually, me and you are from the same area. We are from Andoni, but we yes, have never yeah. met you. Well, when I probably with, when I left to England in 1990, 
probably were not born. I don't know. <laughs> yes, I'm sure I wasn't born. Okay, and carry on. My namesake to my uncle. So when I saw your name, I knew that we were from the same place. Thank you so much, sir. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you to our mentors and our mentees. Um, this is a very beautiful session. So I'll just go ahead to read out the questions. And when I read the question, I would call out um, the, the mentors that to answer. So the first question is, how do you resolve energy disputes during a pandemic using ADR? So let's hear from Mr. Milton. Over to you, sir. Sorry, I'm muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you once again, Juliana. The, um, that, that question is a very intriguing question. And when I saw the question, what, what, what came to my mind is the fact that the question is more of a health-based a health question or a medical question, you know. Um, generally, we experienced a the outbreak of a, a pandemic worldwide. The pandemic, you know, hampered a lot of events, affected a lot of businesses, and it even led to a global shutdown that lasted for a period of over two months, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, that event led to um, research on how to continue doing business even when faced with a pandemic like that, especially in the future, because we don't know if there'll be another pandemic. Um, that having, having said that, um, I'd like to observe that, in my opinion, the way that we can still you know, involve or engage in ADR to resolve disputes during a pandemic is simple. Um, First of all, I think that participants of the industry have to, you know, adopt and practice the guidelines against pandemics like COVID-19. That is to say that we have to wear face masks during meetings or during proceedings. We have to wear face masks, we have to, you know, avoid close contacts, we have to wash our hands frequently. And, um, and a couple of, of other measures. But in the alternative, um, we're, we're using Zoom for this meeting. I think Zoom was not possible a, a couple of years ago. It's a, it's a new innovation and invention that has been largely commended. Um, so in the alternative, I think participants of the industry can you know, um, involve the use of technological developments like Zoom or WhatsApp calls that allow parties to stay wherever they are to communicate with each other and um, see how they can resolve their disputes without necessarily traveling to a, traveling to a particular place, place to meet. So um, practically, I think these are the effective ways that energy participants or industry participants can, you know, avoid a shutdown of activities due to a pandemic. So um, I hope I've answered your question. And, um, Thank you very much, Milton. Yes, you have. Okay. Um, so I'll be reading out the second question and to be um, for Mr. Uboho. Um, so the second question is, how efficient is the ADR medium due to enforcement processes? How efficient uh, is sorry, the ADR Sorry, can I say something? Due to enforcement? Juliana? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, please, can I add something to my, uh, my friend's uh, contribution? You see, yes, during sir. the pandemic, yeah, there are, I actually was attended, uh, I was, uh, I, I was a legal counsel, I was a counsel to uh, a company called Managed Care Advisory Group in the UK. And we actually had our remote hearing, the London arbitration session held by remote. And I can actually supply the authority. We, we, we did it remotely. 
and um, the authority is with me. I can supply it to you. So we and there were so many others too, in, especially in the UK, that uh, that had the, se the session, and it was okay. We it didn't affect us at all because we we use um, the we use Google a Google Classroom and the Zoom as backup. And it was okay, we, we got it done. So uh, the authority is managed care advisory group LLC versus Cigna Health. So I will send the full citation to you. So the, the, it didn't affect us at all. Even the, the companies, the companies, the companies were happy that they don't have to pay their transport or flight to go wow. anywhere. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, so our yeah, second okay. question. Sorry, please. Can I just? I wanted yes, to yes, add to that. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Uh, so the issue of online dispute resolution. I don't know. Based on your professional understanding of the process, there's been yes. this debate about determination of seats or as a venue of arbitration when it comes to online dispute um, yes. resolution. So in that sense, what was the process for you? What was the experience? Yeah. The, 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 yeah, the, the experience is simple. Is the, the the party already submitted the, the to arbitration before the, the lockdown. So it was the issue of the seat where should the, the seat of arbitration was not called into question. Great. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Thank you very much, Udoho, for that question. Okay, so the second question is to you. So um, I think I've read it, but I can still read it again. How efficient is the ADR medium due to the due to enforcement processes? Okay, thank you. Interesting question. Um, efficiency of ADR medium due to the enforcement. So, if we are to consider enforcement reason um, in the assessment of ADR, um, of course, under ADR here we are talking about different um, means like arbitration negotiation, um, which from the definition you've already had in the course of the presentations, an arbitration will have some arbitrator, like a third party um, adjudicating, then mediation where you also have, in this sense, it's not as binding as um, a mediation, negotiation where you just serve the parties without any need for a third party. Now this translates also to enforcement. In terms of enforcement, um, the arguments about ADR being binding, um, an ADR award, of course, has a binding effect. By virtue of the New York Convention, it could be easily enforceable, enforced by just registering before the national court. Um, we all know that mediation is not binding. Um, a mediated agreement, um, does not have a binding effect, but in any case, it could still be um, enforced if it is taken before the court and you know pronounced as a consent judgment. Same thing will apply to negotiation. So in terms of enforcement, it will appear that, um, we, that arbitration is binding and arbitration will be um, considered because of course um, of its uh, binding effects, as already said. However, looking at the international nature of most energy disputes, there will still be some limitation if it's just the ordinary concepts or the ordinary practice of international arbitration. That is to say, if you're just talking about, because in this sense, we just have to differentiate between an international commercial arbitration and an investment arbitration. I mean, if it's just a mere commercial arbitration that is before let's say an ad hoc or institutional uh, body. Um, yes, it's binding, but considering the cross-border nature of the award, you still need to take it to the various or respective countries that you have to register before the national courts. That will still be a long process. I mean, in that sense, the national courts are still allowed to, in, in a way, they could, um, they could be shared or they could as well um, um, I could nullify an award 
if there were some procedural um, defects. However, if it's an investment arbitration under the International Center for Investment, for Settlement of Investment Disputes, that's the ICSID, you realize that investment arbitration awards have an advantage over commercial uh, arbitration awards because in the case of ICSID awards, they have binding force. You don't need to, um, they're not subject to the national court's discretion at some point to determine maybe there was a procedural breach in the course of the arbitration. It's by force that once it has been determined, you have to, as a national court, acknowledge and sanction that award. So the advantage of an investment arbitration award under the ICSI and an investment award under any other forum or an international commercial uh, arbitration award is the fact that the ICSI will have a binding force over any court, over any national authority as compared to the other, um, the, the commercial arbitration award, which is binding, but you have to still subject it to the approval of the national court. And um, also the point to note is the fact that, um, I mean, the, the, the whole um, concept of, um, I mean, I've lost my train of thought, but um, I wanted to talk about the ICSID. So in terms of as well, um, ICSID awards, there's also the argument about um, jurisdiction, you know, um, considering the fact that not every um, state party would have uh, entered into a BIT arrangement with another party. So as an investor, you might not always have the protection of a BIT. You might not have always have it possible to go under the investment arbitration forum. So, but generally in terms of enforcement, yes, arbitration is preferable. And so also when you talk of arbitration, there are still different types. You talk of commercial arbitration and you talk of investment arbitration. Investment arbitration awards are better in terms of enforcement than um, commercial awards. And furthermore, investment arbitration awards that we are talking about here are the investment arbitration awards under the exit protocol. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Udoho, for your response to the question. Our third question will be going to Mr. George. What means of settlement will be advisable based on its cost, efficiency, and other factors? Yes. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, thank you, Professor, for um, you've actually um, evoked a, um, a sleeping thought in, 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 some, in our minds, some of us. And uh, I've, uh, we will do something about what you said. Um, what means of settlement would be advisable based on its cost, efficiency, and other factors? You know, cost, efficiency, delays are, will I say, some of the features that differentiate litigation from arbitration to negotiation to mediation to conciliation. And then if you want, if you must add um, the other not, uh, not too popular uh, part of the uh, ADR uh, uh, siblings, which is the expert um, 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 submission or reference to of uh, disputes. Um, but what I will say is, one thing that we all will agree here is that uh, within the energy sector, arbitration seems to be a more popular uh, uh, way to resolve disputes, without a doubt. Why? Because as Professor and uh, Milton has put it, it saves the parties a lot of uh, uh, reputational damage. And then issues of trade secrets, are they are very critical in terms of uh, a company. You don't go into disputes and then you want to resolve your disputes and then after resolving your disputes, you, your business shuts down completely, no. The essence of a dispute is when they arise, you resolve them and you continue in business. Or, or perhaps continue in your relationship with your business partners without necessarily going out of business. So that is what this is about. Now, in terms of uh, advising which is best, I wouldn't say arbitration is even cost, um, 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 cost efficient because 
practically speaking, arbitration is uh, becoming a lot more expensive as we speak because you have to consider a whole lot of factors. You have to get, um, in a, if parties had agreed in their contract to um, have three arbitrators, then either of, either of the parties would appoint an arbitrator each and both arbitrators having been appointed would appoint a third arbitrator who would become like uh, the most neutral uh, arbitrator. That is a panel of three arbitrators. Some of the parties, some parties can agree to, uh, uh, to settle for just an arbitrator. But whichever case, there has to be a cost. Now, the arbitrator's fees is also a cost, which, which typically will be borne by both parties. I currently have um, an arbitration that I am acting for one of the parties. And I can tell you, practically speaking, it takes a lot for either of the parties to actually cover out the amount of money that is uh, that would typically be, like, be agreed by both parties you know, to pay the arbitrator. That is one. The second aspect is um, venue of the arbitration. Now, we have institutions, um, arbitral institutions in Nigeria. You have the Lagos uh, Court of Arbitration, um, and then you have some other institutions with, uh, in, in, in Nigeria that offer the space for arbitration to take place. But these spaces, they are not free, so you have to pay for them. Some parties can decide to have arbitrations in uh, a, uh, in a hotel, but in a, in a better environment. So whichever place parties choose to have this arbitration, you can, you can see parties can decide to have an arbitration in London, in uh, America, or any part of the world. And then you, you, you see parties traveling far and wide, uh, although Recently, we now have a situation where you can attend to hearings without the need to travel. Like profs have said, you know, uh, you can conduct uh, proceedings virtually. So that has really limited the option of having to travel from one country to the other to attend arbitration proceedings. You know, but whichever way you want to look at it, there has to be a cost for venue of arbitration. Now, um, if we want to look at it again, um, arbitration is even more eff efficient, if, if, you, if you have to say, and it's becoming a lot more expensive. We can't even talk about litigation because we are, we are talking specifically on energy-related discourse, so we can't even talk about litigation. Litigation in, in itself is entirely a different uh, uh, kettle of fish. So my, my focus here is just on the alternative dispute resolution mechanism for which arbitration is one of them. For me, I would say I have a, 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 a liking for mediation. Why? Because, like I mentioned earlier, um, and like um, one of the uh, Ubo, uh, Ubo Ho Yang said, mediate, uh, mediation settlement agreements are not enforceable per se. So when parties arrive at a, an agreement as to what they want, and they put it in writing in the, in, in the mediated settlement agreement, it would typically go through the process of enforcement. So you take that agreement to a court, register it, and then you now have to enforce. So the document itself is not enforceable per se, like you have a judgment. So um, if I will say, I would mention that mediation should be uh, uh, an area that should be explored, you know, and. Of course, there's this um, thing about parties are given the liberty or the freedom to air their, their views or air their mind because mediation is more or less uh, uh, less formal when you compare it with arbitration and uh, and uh, litigation. So I would typically go for mediation. You know, uh, arbitration can be an option, but if you are looking for cost. Uh, an avenue or a, a mechanism that would allow you save cost and would, that would also be efficient in resolving disputes. I think mediation is some area that uh, would also uh, want to explore. So that's that's my take on it. Thank you very much, Mr. George, for the response to the question. Um, the fourth question will be going to the professor, and it's um, what court has jurisdiction to hear cross-border energy disputes? You're muted, sir.
Um, okay. Thank Hello, you. can you hear me? Can you yes, hear sir, me? Can hear me now. Yes, sir. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Can I, yes, sir, can we can hear you. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. What you need to understand is this question is, uh, is incorrect. The reason being that in the energy, there are different aspects of energy. In the, in, the, in the energy industry, there are different divisions. So there is no singular answer to it. Now, if it is an investment, you will have to go through the, the ISSD to be the finality location for this to be decided. But on the other hand, if it is not investment, the ECT has pro provided the module and the requirements for a centralized and generalized acceptable jurisdiction. That is the answer for that. Now, there are a lot of problems associated with jurisdiction. You know the, the doctrine of uh, 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 foreign uh, convenient, forum convenient, shopping, forum shopping. You understand? That doctrine in, in energy arbitration is there, that the parties can shop for the most convenient, but which they have to understand we should not be depart from the what the instrument of the contract says. The arbitration agreement must be complied with because there are usually the model form creates like minimum of three locations for it for the petroleum, especially for petroleum arbitration. Minimum of three three forums. So under that, you cannot say one is superior to the other. Is the parties that will choose from the outset of entering into the agreement, into the contract, as to which of the either of the three that can be used. So that's why I said that question is incorrect. And I, despite that, to the ECT has given us wide variation factors that will enable the parties to enter into their to indicate their forum from ab initio. That's it. Thank you very much, Professor, okay. for the response. Yes. Um, the fifth question will be going to um, Mr. Woho. Um, is there anything that could be done to make litigation a favorable option for energy dispute resolution? Is there anything that could be done to make litigation a favorable option for energy dispute resolution? I looked at that and I just... Um, mm. Okay, so um, is there anything that could be done to make litigation favorable? Um, I think to start from it's, um, I, I doubt that we'll be able to have a process or system where um, the judgment of the national court would um, be um, binding across countries. We are yet to have, I don't even think that's possible to have a universal court or a universal jurisdiction. As far as that is the case, then looking at execution and in terms of enforcement, litigation will still be a challenge, no matter how we try to uh, bend it. But in terms of the process, I think um, in terms of the procedure, we could still do a lot more um, to make it favorable. Um, one, of course, we have seen technologies helping out. No thanks, but thanks to COVID-19. Um, you've seen how the remote hearing has been developed um, because this, this was one of the issues then where um, people were arguing against litigation. I mean, jurisdictional um, um, barriers in terms of having access. You don't need to leave your comfort zone to travel or maybe you are in the UK 
coming to Nigeria. I mean, you, you could do that remotely if possible uh, with the facility. So that would make the procedure um, easier and it will make the procedure um, less tasking. And of, also in terms of um, time, Nigeria, for instance, okay, all of this I'm bringing down and zeroing in on Nigeria. I mean, that's the context. We look at time. Um, we know how litigation in Nigeria can take years on ending to be determined. Um, one case could take five, 10 years. Energy, the energy guys, they are not interested in wasting time. They just want to cut deals and move to the next project. And of course, these are deals that involve a lot of money. Nobody wants to tie his or her investment down, waiting for some decision. So yes, in terms of cutting down on time, um, our national courts cutting down on time, uh, unnecessary delays should be curtailed. And thank God for remote hearing. We hope to see that more and more. Um, then also the need to, um, I think it's also necessary or important to have judges that, I mean, cases should be assigned to judges with the expertise. I mean, they might not necessarily know everything, but I mean, some substantial knowledge of the subject. That will also help because we have, I mean, in Nigeria, sometimes some of these cases are assigned to judges who, of course, we know by virtue of their qualification, 15 years, is it 10 years, you know, post-call and all of that. Sometimes they don't even have in-depth knowledge of the subjects. We all know that the energy sector is a very specialized area. So even a judge sitting on such case will have the tendency of not delivering the judgment the way that should be. So even an investor will not be encouraged. So three things like in terms of time can be curtailed, that would be nice in terms of um, making it less tasking, remote hearing, which is coming up. And then the need to see um, a possibility of having judges with some expertise or substantial knowledge of the subject. Um, that aside, I think with these three things, uh, I, would, I would think that litigation could be made a lot more favorable. Perhaps in terms of having the judges with substantial um, knowledge of the subject, maybe we could have um, divisions like we have commercial courts. Um, we, we could subdivide that further into, again, let's say energy, where judges there are more but a conversation with the subject matter. Um, with this three, I would believe that um, things will be a lot better in favor of litigation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bobo. So we'll begin to our final question for today and we'll be giving this to Mr. George. Does Nigeria possess the human capital for the expert determination resolution option? Does Nigeria possess the human capital for the expert determination resolution option? Okay, thank you very much. Um, before I answer that question, let me just give a little thought on uh, uh, the earlier question in terms of whether litigation is a more favorable option. Um, for me, I think um, I just have to say this. It's like when you want to, um, it's a question of um, when you're asking how you can convert the devil to stop being the devil that he is. You know, um, in life, there's always the good and the bad. And we've come to know or live with the situation as it is between the good and the bad, you know, no matter how it turns out. Um, I believe for me, ADR for a long time will continue, um, for a long time to come, will continue to be a more preferred option to litigation, virtually all types of disputes, including mm -hmm. energy disputes, uh, any other disputes that you want to talk about. Lit litigation for what it is will remain what it is. Of course, I'm aware that there's um, an effort within in Nigeria uh, by some lawyers trying to um, drive home some reforms within the administration of uh, civil justice procedure, just to try to take away some of the bottlenecks that we usually experience in terms of delays of court cases and all of that, and, and, and specificity in terms of you have a judge that is uh, more inclined to energy law, sitting on energy cases and all of that, just to Okay, I think that Mr. Gibran is having um, network issues. Probably he'll be joining us soon once 
he's able to resolve that. Um, okay, so he's okay. He's back. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Can you? Sorry, I my network just went bad. So, um, in answering the last question, I think whether Nigeria possesses the human capital for the expert determination resolution option. Of course. Um, I think uh, human capital relates basically to uh, possession of uh, some sort of a technical skill, um, education that you've acquired some sort of training uh, and uh, you, you, and this is some sort, this is like the value uh, that, that, that uh, you sell as an individual, you know, so uh, there are experts. In arbitration, there's something we call expert uh, witness. Uh, even in, in litigation, there are also expert evidence that usually would come in. So typically, where there are specific areas um, that require, that are big technical, so the judge or the, or, the, or the arbitrator would invite an expert, you know, to give his views on that specific area. You know, but this is not uh, the expert determination resolution mechanism is a, is a distinct ADR form, which is not too common in Nigeria. I'm aware that uh, the Court of Appeal in a case, uh, Start Oil Nigeria Limited against Star Deep Water Petroleum Limited, has also underscored the need for uh, 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 the issue of expert determination in an equity redetermination of a, a unified oil oil field. It did, this is more or less like stating the case that, um, of course, expert determination is, 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 is becoming more common to commercial agreements because it involves highly technical uh, um, uh, terms and procedure. So when you look at Nigeria as a country, um, we have energy experts without a doubt. Um, I'm aware of few energy experts in Nigeria. I'm aware of uh, uh, energy law experts as opposed to energy experts that are non-lawyers who are uh, armed with the technical skills and expertise to advise, to handle cases, to offer the uh, required um, 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 you know, um, advice to parties within the energy sector. So I believe we have the necessary human capital to actually uh, uh, deal with this in, in Nigeria. So that's my take on this question. Thank you very much, Mr. George. So we'll be rounding up now, but just before we do that, I would like the professor to give his final comments and then we'll round up for today. But while he's giving his comments, please, I would like to encourage the mentors to put your videos on, take a picture of the mentors so that you can um, write what you learned on LinkedIn and tag them and also appreciate them for their time. Thank you very much. Over to you, Professor. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good. Um, this is uh, it, it's a small meeting, but a very productive. <clears throat> Um, I would like to say something that we have not covered in this session because arbitration of yours is big. Uh, we did not look at the challenges, the challenges of enforcing arbitral award in Nigeria. I hope sometime we have, we have to look at that. Um, the, there is a lot of problems with arbitration generally in Nigeria, not just the energy sector, General arbitration. Now, some of the problems are first is indiscriminate use of the stay of execution order by the high courts. I have been, I, I represented an oil firm. After we've gone to New York and we came back, then during enforcement, we got, we were, we were, we were stunned that a, a judge decided to grant the stay of execution to the other party, which has ruined the reputation and the friendship of the two, uh, of the two oil companies. Now, that's number one. Number two, we have a law in Nigeria that is not very, very, uh, very, very productive with regards to enforcement of mutual awards. This law known as the Foreign Judgment Reciprocal Enforcement Act. Now, CAP 35 of, of uh, Law of Federation of Nigeria 2004 is a very useless law. Now, 
the, this law was built upon tit for tat. Now, for example, if a Nigerian company was involved in arbitration in France with a French company that's in Nigeria, and the parties choose France as one of their venues. Uh, when they go there and the French company won to enforce it in Nigeria, or the French company uh, lost and the Nigerian company decided to enforce the arbitral award in France, then the French High Court refused to enforce it. Now, on the other hand, if another French company, which is not this, this same company, a different French company is involved in arbitration with a Nigerian outfit. When it's time to enforce against that French company in Nigeria, Nigeria have the right to refuse to enforce it as a reciprocal action based on, uh, on the arbitration that didn't even concern these two parties. You see, it is not fair. This law is, 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 is very frustrating. Unfortunately, it's still active. It has not been repealed. Now, typically, this action, this particular law, reared its head in the case of Tulip Nigeria Limited versus Nogejo Transport Maritime in 2011. You see, yeah. And in the case of IPCO Nigeria Limited versus NNPC. You see, so this law has been dished out like punishment to foreign companies in Nigeria and it's making it very, very frustrating to have the enforced arbitral. It takes a lot of money. It, as my colleague said, it costs a lot to go for arbitration. Then you come in to enforce it. Someone says, okay, your company, your parent company, your origin is France. So 10 years ago, a French company, uh, uh, High Court refused to enforce a uh, arbitral award of, in favor of a Nigerian company. For that, they will enforce it. It's frustrating. Now, the next uh, challenge that we have is that Nigerian courts, high courts, have one way of refusing to enforce. In the case of MSS versus Kano Oil Millers, the high court refused is on two grounds, on reciprocal treatment, which I mentioned based on the, the act and also on other flimsy grounds. Now, another, in another case, the, in or the case of Ebo Khan versus Ekonibe, 2001, the High Court of Nigeria set aside the arbitral award. What is the reason? Flimsy excuses. These are serious challenges that are affecting the enforcement of arbitral award in Nigeria. Now, another, finally, we you know to enforce arbitral award in Nigeria, there's a limitation time of six years. Now, for example, in the case of City Engineering Limited, this was FHA, 1997. The, the limitation of six years was used to refuse to enforce irrespective of an authority which, which was cited in the arbitration hearing. This authority of Scott versus Avery, which is a lucus classicus with, with, with regards to limitation of time. Scott and every case is of 1855, which was decided by the by House of Lords in the UK. What is the, what is the principle of Scott and Avery? Avery? Scott and Avery says created an exception to the six years rule of limitation. He says that where the party has discovered a breach, a party has discovered a breach and notified the other party of the breach. Now, the time, six years, time cannot run taken by both parties, for example, the mediated before the six years can run. But 
in the wisdom of the Nigerian courts, a lot in, for example, in the case of uh, Ekonibe, they, the court now construed the six years to start running for the date of discovery, which is a, a, which is a common civil litigation uh, principle in Nigeria. But then, but the court and everything says no. The Lagos class says not until all those steps in negotiation, mediation, and all that are complete. It is when the party actually put the matter to arbitration, or if the party fail to follow the, all those steps, then the six years can run. So now there is a conflict of law. Now there is a conflict of law whereby the Scott and every um, position on uh, the limitation, six years limitation, is being consistently overruled by the Nigerian court. This is a challenge. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Yes. Um, thank you for creating time to spend with the next generation. And we are so grateful. Thank you, Mr. George. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the knowledge shared. Thank you, Uboho Iyang. Thank you also for coming to be with us. We are so grateful. And finally, thank you, Mr. Milton, also in absentia for being with us. We are so grateful to all our mentors and to all our mentees. Thank you for working together as a group, putting your research together and for presenting and sharing your slides. We are so grateful. So we'll be meeting next week, Wednesday, again to treat another interesting topic in the energy industry. Um, I would like to wish everyone an amazing rest as we hopefully retire for the day or whatever we want to do anyway. Um, I would like to thank everyone. Take care of yourselves and we are so grateful. Thank you. Have a lovely day, everyone. Bye. Julia. Sir? Okay. Julia, two or two ten, man. Two or two ten, man. Um. Uh. Ebi wale. Ebi wale. Ija. Hey, you cannot speak your language. Bye bye. <laughs> I'll chat you up, sir. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye, bye my everybody. Bye bye. Bye. Yes. Bye. Bye. <laughs>